Ball breakers. The next day, Jags arrived at Cam's house early. Tilly was due to arrive soon for Gramps' sitting duties. AJ had plans with one of his many fuck buddies, so Jags and Cam would be on their own tonight. As sure as he was that the Jacksonville Jaguars would come in dead last this season, he knew Cam and Maggie were meant to be together. Cam hated Jags meddling in his life, but this was too damn important. Human beings were pack animals, not meant to be alone. When he saw Tilly's car turn into the gravel driveway, Jags rubbed his hands together. It was time to meddle. Can we talk? Sure. Jags rounded her car. and climbed into the passenger seat. How's Maggie? Why do you care? Okay, I'll start. I think Cam is lost to her, but he won't admit it. And I think she might feel the same way about him. (sighs) He hasn't called her. I know, I know. What would you say to giving love slash fate a goose? I'd say yes. Fantastic, here's the plan. My dad's gonna relieve you of watching Grandpa. You call Maggie and drag her to Critters. I'll do the same with Cam. I can't do that to my husband. You know how he is. But Nate loves me. It's not you, it's your brother. Nate doesn't trust him. I understand. But? But what? What if my sister went with Maggie instead of me? Good, 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 yes, that works. Why don't you call your father and tell him he doesn't have to come over anymore? I'm only paying you to work until 8. But I don't want Cam to have a curfew tonight. Got me? (laughs) Sure thing. Cam had been nursing one of his signature migraines all day. He had called Jags and tried to get out of going out tonight, but the little bastard wouldn't take no for an answer. Cam set the blender to liquefy, closing his eyes at the sound. Come in. Come in. Hello. Jags isn't here yet. No problem. He sat across from her and drummed his fingers on the table. Uh, Nice weather we're having. It's been raining for three days. Yep. So, how are things? Things are fine. And for you? Okay. You want one? I'm on the clock. 
Right, uh, sorry. How's, um... Nate? Yeah, him. He's fine. Thanks for asking. And how's Jags? Hopefully he's not wrapped around a tree. He checked his phone again for the third time in the last two minutes. You're not very good at small talk, are you? Hello, Tilly. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Fantastic. Are you ready? Yep. Wink's place was a cozy dive of a bar, nestled all alone at the back of old Fairview Drive. The joint could have comfortably sat over 20, but most times it was only filled by half that. An old-fashioned jukebox was tucked in the corner. It played everything from old country western and southern rock to the saddest blues and the darkest jazz. All any self-respecting drunk needed, and nothing more. The three measly tables sat empty much of the time. Most sat at the long bar top while waiting for their next round. Or waiting for their chance to talk to the man himself. Because most came to talk to Winks. He was a 50-something fellow with a round belly and a genuine smile. He was also a great listener. Whether it was 1 p.m. or 2 a.m., Winks always seemed to be manning the place. Whether he was pouring drinks, wiping down the bar, sweeping the floors, or taking out the trash, Winks' place truly lived up to its name. Cam wondered when the guy slept. The less mainstream music, lack of flashy colors, and the sparsity of its patrons made it the perfect joint for the older crowd, as opposed to the wild parties that packed themselves into critters. Sitting on a tall bar stool, drowning the remainder of his third beer, Cam spotted Maggie. Already a tall woman, she towered over her friend in her high heel brown boots. Her friend wore khaki slacks with a white sleeveless silk top. Her blonde hair was bound tightly at the back of her head. Her face gentle and her eyes kind. The little fucker had set him up. Wow, look who's here. It's Maggie. And she's with, hey, I think I know her. She works at Chase. I think she's an engineer. What are the chances we'd meet up with them here? What are the odds? Oh, we gotta get going. It's almost eight. Dad's with them. Gramps is fine. I'm gonna ask them to join us. No shit. You're gonna ask them to join us? Really? Jags ignored Cam's sarcasm. Fuck! Cam glanced at Maggie. Her white tank top hugged her breasts. Her erect nipples poked through the thin fabric. Oh, man. What the fuck? His eyes watered, and so did his mouth. He turned his focus to the tabletop and willed his hormones to a sudden death. Never wanted anyone anywhere as near the passion he felt for her 
His groin throbbed with just the sight of her. The things he wanted to do to her should be illegal, and probably were in some states. As he pulled Maggie into a hug, she glanced over Jag's shelter, and her gaze met with Cam's. Hey, Star. Small world. You work at Chase, right? Third floor? Web developer? And you're an engineer who works on... Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Second floor. Right. How about you guys join us? That doesn't sound like a request. I insist. Jags wrapped his arms around their waist. This is my brother. Cam, this is Star. He kissed the top of Maggie's head. And I'm pretty sure you know who this is. We've met. Who's up for a game of pool? Sure. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. I'll break. leaned over the table, her green necklace disappearing into the shadow between her breasts. Sliding her stick backward, she readied her shot. He shifted his weight, shifting his weight again, Cam propped one foot up on the wall behind him. Take the damn shot already! What's your problem? Move. I'll break. He sent the cue ball at the triangle and shattered the balls across the green felt. A solid ball dropped into a corner pocket. One striped ball dropped into a side pocket. Solids. Jags nudged his elbow into Star's side. You're up, sugar. Star leaned over the table. When she moved the stick forward, the tip jutted up and completely missed the cue ball. Let me help. Jags spooned behind her. Do this. He made a circle with his left thumb and index finger. Perfect. Now, with these three fingers. Now, spread your fingers for better support. With his right hand on the end of the stick right behind hers, he paused and inhaled. You smell great. He tilted his head and pressed his lips against her neck. Really pretty. Cam rolled his eyes at the sight of his brother wooing Star. Jags was a bit of a player, much like his older brother AJ. But Jags genuinely loved and respected women, unlike AJ, whose favorite saying was, they all look the same upside down. I have a boyfriend. You're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Do you guys need a room? Shh. I'm trying to concentrate over here. With his left arm wrapped around Star's waist, he shifted their position. This is a better angle. He guided the stick forward, and together they sent the cue ball smacking into the 14th ball. The ball spiraled vertically across the table and dropped into the corner pocket. You're natural. Take another shot. Hey, hey, nice shot. But you're supposed to aim for the stripes, not the solids. Well darn. Maggie moved around the table and stopped across from Cam. Gliding her stick back, she paused to retrieve the green beads from between her breasts leaving them to dangle over the table. Cam pulled at his navy tee, fanning his heated body. A drop of sweat rolled down the side of his face. He moved to stand behind her, 
blocking his vision of her breasts. Breasts he planned to lick before the night's end. She shifted her position to better her angle and the delicious curve of her left ass cheek sank just below the hem of her very short jean shorts. Kim forced his gaze from her luscious ass and stared across the table at Star and Jags. Is your brother okay? He looks a little pale. He's sick all right, and yet he refuses to take his medication. I hope it's nothing serious. Depends on your definition of serious. Jags pulled an orange pack of gum from his pocket. Want one? Thanks. Jags tilted his pool stick in Maggie's direction. She's the medication. I see. Cam flipped him off. What's the illness? Same as the medication. Her. Cam stepped forward, spooning behind her. He gripped her hips and wrenched her backward. He tilted his hips and nudged his arousal into the small of her back. What are you doing to me? She flipped around and rested her ass on the side of the pool table. I don't know what you mean. Don't play games. I'm not playing a game. I've made no secret about how I feel. You're the one playing a game. This may be hard to believe, but this is who I am. I'm not putting on a show. Don't flatter yourself. Maggie. If you want to fuck, just say so.